This little piece of plastic plays a very critical role in your mobile internet setup. So today, we're going to be talking all about SIM cards. Hi there, I'm Cherie with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, and this little piece of plastic is otherwise known as a SIM card. SIM stands for Subscriber Identity Module. And basically, the information that is contained on this little card is everything with your cellular data plan. It contains the phone number that is on your device that people can use to call you and send text messages to. It has all the information about the data plan and the terms and service of your phone plan with your carrier. It is what basically identifies your device, a smartphone or potentially a hotspot or a router to the carrier and what features you get with the plan that you have subscribed to. Now, there's a lot to know about these little cards and how critical they are to our setups. So we're going to be going in depth on this. We're going to be talking about how to move these between devices, how to size them and all the different formats that they come in. But basically, every cellular device on the market today needs a SIM card to be able to function, to be able to place phone calls, to be able to get online to the internet. Now, SIM cards can either be inserted into devices, some of them are electronically embedded inside the devices, and some devices like modern smartphones and some routers can actually allow you to have more than one SIM card inserted at a time so you have access to multiple data plans. So we're going to be diving in and Chris is up next to tell you more. So what I'm holding up here is known as a nano SIM nano because, well, SIMs actually come in multiple sizes and they've changed over time. So the nano SIM is probably the most common now, but back when SIM cards first came out, they were actually the size of a credit card. So that was considered the full size SIM. Then, well, you've probably never seen one of these. These haven't been used in phones in ages, full size SIM cards like this. What's more common is the mini SIM, this size, and then came the micro sim this size you see it's you know, pretty similar and then the nano even tinier because well as phones advanced they wanted more space for things like batteries and other electronics and they didn't want to waste all that space for sim cards but one of the really interesting things and important things is the sims are actually all electrically identical the part that matters has always been the size of the nano sim the rest of it around it was just plastic you know, to basically make it easier to insert and remove. And that opens the door for cutting SIMs down to size. If you want to try and take a SIM card that is one size and chop it down to be a smaller size, that's actually possible and you're not destroying the SIM. It will still work because all the important electronics are in the nano SIM size piece right here. So there are tools that are SIM cutters like this that can cut down a mini or a micro sim and turn it into a nano sim. And if you're trying to go in the reverse direction, then you've got sim card adapters that will take a nano sim or a, a micro sim and let you put it into a mini sim or a, a, a micro sim slot. So you know, these names get kind of confusing, but you can go up and down in size as needed. It's easier to go up with adapters than to chop things but it is possible to go in both directions to adapt SIMs to be, to be able to move them between devices. Now, all these different devices have different places where the SIM cards can go. So let's show you some of the different ways that SIM cards can be installed and where they are fit into devices. Now, most phones have a SIM slot externally. It's usually a little dot someplace where you can put a SIM eject tool or a paper clip or a safe a little pin and press and eject and whoop, you have access to lose your SIM card and have it drop out of the tray. Um, and that's how SIM cards work in phones. Uh, hot spots and stuff often have the SIM cards hidden underneath the battery and the ways that they go in and out often vary. So here's a, a Verizon um, 8800 and the SIM card is in a little tray under the battery here and 
This is a nano sim. You have to look for the little tab to I put it in the right orientation, contact side down, and you just slide it in until there, until it fits into place. And then to get it out, you just slide it out in reverse. And sometimes it's helpful to either use a sim eject tool or something just to gently help slide something out if your fingernails aren't able to do the job. Other types of hotspots have different slots on the bottom, usually still hidden under the battery. Here is a Netgear Nighthawk. The slot here is again down here and you could slide in and out. This one takes um, micro sim, so if you have a nano sim like we have here, you need to use an adapter to put it into this slot. And again, always line up the devices there, the sim card where the little notch is cut out of the corner to make sure you're putting it in the right way. And then just line it up and never force it because you don't want to bend the, tin the pins that are making the con contact on the sim and never try to put a SIM in the wrong size slot. So if you were to slide in a nano SIM here where it's expecting a, a micro SIM, you can potentially get it stuck or bend the pins. This really matters for some of the other ones where it can get lost deep inside a device and you might have to have a technician do surgery to extract it. So always have the right adapters set up and use them. Other types of devices, like here's a Netgear Orbi router, make it really easy to get to the SIM slot. It's right externally, it's spring-loaded. You just line up the little tab, push it in, and it kind of clicks in place. And to eject it, you push it again, and the spring pops it out. Super easy when it's uh, exposed and external like that. Now we get to some routers that have SIM cards in all sorts of different places. Uh, this PepWave um, uh, MaxBR1 has actually two SIM slots, but only a single modem. So the inside the software interface, you can pick which SIM is active, but only one is active at a time. It's really handy for quickly switching between, say, AT&T and Verizon, for example. Now, most routers take the full size, the, the mini SIM, the bigger size. So you would use an adapter, put the SIM into the adapter. If you, this is a... a a micro sim going into a mini sim adapter and orient it into the slot and push it in. And you'll see this was kind of tough to slide in place because the this particular adapter kind of makes things thick. That's why I keep some needleless pliers on hand because even though it's spring loaded, sometimes it's gets a little stuck and you've got to extract them. And that'd be a case for using a different adapter that doesn't add any extra width. So um, that adapter got a little extra back plastic to it. Not so good here. An adapter like this one will probably slide in and out easier. Another tip for things like this, don't put an adapter in to test it without a SIM card being in the adapter. Or again, that could get stuck and bend the pins. Got another router here. This is a, a Peplink um, Balance 20X. On the back, it's got the same sort of uh, uh, dual SIM slot for the extra expansion modem here. And again, but this is a, a dual modem device. So it's got a whole other modem with other SIM slots. And those are hidden down on the bottom. And these are actually kind of a really tricky SIM slot to put things in and out of. It's got a little metal tab that slides. And then you've got to lift it up and balance that there. And then take... Again, uh, a mini sim of the bigger size. Slide it into this little tray, push the tray down, and then slide the little metal tab over and it locks it into place. So again, just take your time, figure it out. Every device might have a different way that the sim cards go in place. And some devices actually have to take them apart because the sim card is hidden away and not accessible outside unless you unscrew them and stuff. So things like the Wi-Fi Ranger Converge router on the roof, you have to unscrew it to get at the hidden SIM slot inside. But every cellular device has a SIM slot, except if they're using eSIM. Now, eSIM is a technology called embedded SIM that's basically replacing a little plastic with software. And some devices, like the new iPhones, can use eSIM and a regular SIM to have two SIMs active. The eSIM you install either via an app or scanning a QR code with your phone, and other devices that support eSIM will have similar ways of 
installing this virtual soft sim works the same way internally. It's actually running on a chip just like this, but it is permanently embedded and you could swap between multiple eSIMs. So you can actually have several eSIMs installed for different carriers and just pick between them. Kind of handy. It's the kind of the, the way things are going in the future because then device manufacturers don't have to put slots and they don't have to waste all that space and it's easier to waterproof things if you don't have external jacks. So now the big question is, why would you even want to move the SIM card to a different device? And there's a lot of reasons why. The first is maybe you want to upgrade your device or switch to a different phone, maybe one you purchase independently from a friend or online from a third party. This allows you just to move the SIM card from one phone to another without having to involve your carrier. It's really that simple. Just move the SIM card over. Or perhaps maybe normally in your RV or boat, you run off of a mobile router that has to be plugged in. It doesn't have battery power, but maybe you're going off on a hike or you're leaving for the day and you wanna be able to take your data plan with you and you wanna move it to a mobile hotspot device that can run off a battery and is far more portable. That allows you to move your data plan from the router to the hotspot device. Um, you might also have going out uh, for a whitewater rafting adventure and you want to take a cheaper or more rugged phone with you instead of your expensive flagship phone. There's lots of reasons why you might want to move your plan around. But you do need to check in with your carrier and your plan to make sure that you are authorized to move that SIM card to a different device. Some carriers won't let you move your SIM card. They might be only designated for certain type of devices like smartphone plans, typically can't be used in a data only device unless the carrier specifically authorizes that use. Also, they might have a specific type of device that that plan is designed for, like a connected car plan can only work on connected car devices. So if you move the SIM card, the plan might not work or be legit or within terms of service. So be sure to check in with your carrier on that. Some of them might even lock it to the specific IMEI number, that's the serial number of the device, and you actually have to contact the carrier if you want to move that SIM card to a different device so they can update your account. So be sure to check in on the terms and conditions of your plan and with your carrier, because uh, SIM swapping sometimes you just can't do it between devices, but if you have a, a plan that you can, it really is as simple as just moving the SIM card from one device to another and adapting if you need to. So how do you get these little plastic things? A lot of the carriers, when you subscribe to a new plan, they're either going to send you one or they're going to activate it right in the store when you sign up for the plan. Some devices, if you buy a mobile hotspot or a smartphone, it's going to come with a SIM card, a blank one, already installed, and all you have to do is activate the plan with the carrier. But keep in mind, these SIM cards are carrier specific. So a Verizon card can only work with a Verizon plan. If you're going with a prepaid or a MVNO or reseller, they may have specific cards like Cricut. You need to get a Cricut SIM card to work with a Cricut device. And some carriers will allow you to reuse a SIM card. So if you have like a leftover Verizon card from an older plan or device, you can just reactivate it sometimes. Other carriers like AT&T, they want you to have a new SIM card for each plan that you activate. So the SIM card is usually provided with your plan, but sometimes that might not be practical. So you can go to stores that sell prepaid plans like Best Buy or Target and buy a blank SIM card. You're gonna pay maybe $10, or you can go to the carrier's uh, website and just have them ship you a blank SIM card. You can keep that on hand so that you can activate a plan when you need it on your device. So there's all ways to provide and get those SIM cards. Do you know the size that you need? Some carriers are getting really smart and they actually have a punch out card that has all three sizes available on one card with the SIM card. So you just pick the size for your device. That makes it super handy so you're not having to pre-guess. But keep those things in mind when you're selecting your SIM cards, when you're moving them between devices, and hopefully this helps save you some frustration down the road. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.